Hi, Betty Lindsay here from GoJango.com. I want to talk to you today about pinning your dependencies in your Django and Python projects. I want to start off by telling you kind of two different ways to do it, and then kind of three stories that are personal experience that kind of led to some heartache by either not, depending, pinning, not pinning dependencies or doing weirdness around pinning dependencies and how I relied on it. So first, there's kind of two ways to pin your dependencies. One is you can, in your virtual environment, you can do a pip freeze and it lists out all of the pa packages that you have pip installed. And then you would do kind of a pip freeze and then a bracket into requirements.txt. And that writes all of those dependencies out and then you put that in your project and you're good to go. The positives to that is it makes sure to install every single dependency and at the exact version that they need to be and you know that'll always work. The downside to that is now you have to check every single individual package and some of those dependencies are only dependencies to some of the projects that you have. So you have to double check that those work for with those dependencies and upgrade all of those as well. The second way to kind of pin your dependencies is to again do the pip freeze and then go in there and remove all of the dependencies that aren't your main kind of top level packages. So you might have to go in and remove the six library, which is what a lot of packages um, have and install and rely on. And you're just gonna let those other packages manage the versions. So those are kind of the two different ways. So we're like the first way you might have 100 dependencies and the second way you might only have six because those six are gonna manage the versions of all of their dependencies for you. There's good and bad on both. And I'm gonna kind of illustrate some, uh, with some stories of personal experiences that I've had that kind of talk you through some of that. So the first story I want to uh, tell you all about is kind of an early on thing when I was beginning my Django and Python development and really didn't understand uh, that you should pin your dependencies and kind of how to do it. And it actually led to some frustration. So what I did is I, is I used a package, didn't really understand how pip worked all that well. And so I just put the URL to the master of the package that I was using because there wasn't a uh, PyPy package for it. And I'm like, well, this will work. That's how it works, right? Like it installs the version that I want. Well, unfortunately, it did. And then two weeks later, when I installed something, you know, when I did an upgrade, it installed it again from master. And then the site went down. Well, what had happened was uh, they had updated the code in master to something and they didn't have migrations in Django at this point. So this particular package didn't bother using South. They just, I guess they only ever use this package on on new versions of their app and so they do a sync DB. I don't know how they managed it and I didn't realize that they didn't do that. And so there were database changes. Well, uh, they removed a couple of fields and they added a couple of others and then I don't, apparently they would have done a data migration to move data around. Well, anyway, my site went down. I couldn't do anything on the site very well because like this was a core piece and it was terrible and it took me two hours of debugging in production to figure out what was going on because I had so many different weird error messages. And I finally figured it out. It was because that I, they, didn't depend, they didn't pin any of their dependencies in there. I didn't pin any of my dependencies. And so I was just using the latest master all the time. So when something changed, you know, going upstream, it just broke. And I finally had to find a commit um, in, in their thing in their git repo and check that out i finally forked that repository and set my top level of my master to that hash or to that commit number and pointed myself to that so i didn't accidentally screw up and go to another uh, commit in that master branch and like let me tell you that was stressful that took two hours to figure out what the issue was the base issue and then another couple of hours to figure out what the right commit was and get it all working in the meantime, this is all in production because I was having a hard time getting it all working. I mean, fortunately, this is like my first, you know, little time into Django. And so, like, I kind of give myself a little, you know, excuse like, hey, I don't really know what's going on. And so I learned from there to always pin my dependencies no matter what. 
because I don't want to go through that again and try to debug in production dependency problems. So the next uh, story kind of goes along with um, pending, you, I penned a dependency and upgraded a dependency and they had, and I let the package manage its own dependencies. And so one of the things they can do is in like the setup.py, they can set up a range for one of its dependencies. Hey, if you have this version to this version, uh, then use it. Well, when I upgraded this, my particular package that I was using, one of its dependencies had installed something previously. Well, it was just inside that range. Well, there was kind of a weird little issue with the version of Python that I was using. The version of Python it supported, the, my package supported, the version of Python that its dependency supported, and the version of that package that was installed. It was a really weird little situation. And fortunately, this was on a server that we were getting set up. Again, it was almost an in-production issue. We hadn't actually turned this particular server on, but it was our production server and we were upgrading a package. Well, we had this weird like three-way version thing going on uh, that was causing us issues, even though we had penned our dependency uh, for that main level thing. We were like, hey, these people know what they're doing, and they really did. This was even an outlier from normal. Uh, and we just let that other package manage its own dependencies. And what ended up happening was we didn't check, you know, these dependencies with all the different Python versions. And so when we went to go to push it to production, it just plain didn't work. Like it, it wouldn't start. We didn't even get error messages. And it was so totally, it just would not start at all. We finally were able to manipulate it and we got an error message. It was an import issue. Like it was importing something, except what it was trying to import um, worked. Every other case it worked. It worked on my machine. It worked on you know a fellow developer's machine. It worked on everyone's machine, except in production. And we could not figure out what the issue was. It turns out that there were two issues. Issue one was, the server had an older version of the package inside of that range. And based on that and the version of Python that was there, uh, there it had an importing issue. How we finally solved it was we forked that dependency and pointed our dependencies in our requirements.txt file to our fork. I went through and actually looked at some of the code and ironically, the code that was breaking it was a Python 2.6 backwards compatibility issue with Python 2.7 and Python 3.0. I removed the 2.6 backwards compatibility in our fork and voila, everything worked just fine. Uh, and then finally, you know, we, up, we were upgrading to a newer version of Django. We were really far behind at this point. When we upgraded to a new, newer version of Django, we were able to upgrade all of our uh, dependencies and everything worked fine after that. But it was another kind of one of those really weird issues where versions kind of like started, you know, mixing and matching and, and we kind of hit an edge case. So that's kind of another story on penning dependencies that you kind of have to be careful with. And it's kind of a pitfall and a kind of a downside of only pinning your top level uh, dependencies. Now, at the end of the day, I still only pin my top level dependencies and I let those dependencies manage their own because this, I've been doing Python Django development for almost five years now uh, professionally. And literally this was the first time that, that I've hit this particular issue. So I still find it valuable personally to pin my main dependencies and let my dependencies manage their own. So the, the third story that I have is kind of a weird one. It's kind of still something I don't understand a lot because I haven't really taken the time to understand it. I just found a solution and it works. And I was installing something one day. I was installing and deploying. And I really don't understand too well how the git dependencies work inside of your requirement.txt file 100%. Well, I, I put like the main, you know, git thing and it installed. Well, I went to upgrade that package and get the new stuff on the server from that dependency. And my new code wasn't showing up when I would do a production push. And like, I just could not figure out what was going on. And uh, finally, in, in, the, in, the, in the case that I was working with, I realized that, hey, it already saw that it was installed, that ma that package was installed. And so it just kept going. So instead I had to put the dash E 
on the beginning of the git checkout and the git install um, with pip and it set it to be editable so that every time I do a deploy and it does a pip install it installs that package from scratch with the hash of the uh, git repo that we're trying to install from. So I kind of tell this story because sometimes you have to kind of finagle and learn what pip is actually doing and how your dependencies are being installed. So with that, these are three different stories that I have, three different things I've run into when trying to install and manage my dependencies. Uh, I think overall in, in my time in dealing with, what I like to do is, again, uh, pin my main dependencies and let my dependencies manage themselves. I learned the hard way, probably the hardest way, to always pin dependencies by that first example and spending hours in production late at night trying to solve a problem because I didn't know you could or should pin your dependencies properly. So with that, I hope that you all have at least had a good time listening to my screw ups. If, if not, maybe learn something. I'd like to hear if you've had any stories from not pinning your dependencies and you can leave that in a comment below. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to hear more, definitely hit the subscribe button and that will help to kind of get the community to know more about it. And it's also a lot of fun, I think, to hear about what other people are doing. Please leave a comment and uh, let me know how your development's going. I thank you for watching and have a great day.